Hey guys, it's Greg and welcome back to Dream Daddy. The song is going, so let's jump in the game before the song sweeps me away. So let's do it. <laughs> okay, so we're at the school because we are going to meet the headmaster of Amanda's school, if you remember. But if you don't remember because you haven't seen last episode, I recommend you watch last episode. So let's do this. <laughs> I arrive at Amanda's school and check in at the front desk. They give me a bright orange visitor sticker and say, Send me on my way. Yay! I got a sticker now. <laughs> I feel pretty haggard after not brushing my teeth or showering, but hopefully nobody will notice. Oh no! I would never leave the house without brushing my teeth. I die. I die. I check my watch and I'm relieved to see that I'm only two minutes late. Wait, was it room 103? Oh, well, no, eight. I spot a youth standing at the locker and approach him for help. Excuse me, do you know where Mr. Vega's classroom is? The youth turns around and looks me up and down with heavily lined eyes. Ah. <laughs> Come on, kid, I'm late for a meeting. Uh, Mr. Who? <laughs> Mr. Vega. Ah, uh, dunno, have you tried the exit? Oh my god, life's so hard. <laughs> okay, wise guy, are you gonna help me out or not? <sighs> Fine. Up those stairs to the left, can't miss them. Ah, uh, I'm so emo. <laughs> I head up the stairs and walk around, unable to find Mr. Vega's class anywhere. After a couple of minutes of searching, I head back downstairs. That punk youth sent me on a wild goose chase. I get back to where that low rent Jared Way is standing, fully ready to give him a piece of my mind, when suddenly a head pops out of the classroom next to his locker. Lucien, don't you have a third period to get to? Uh, fine, Mr. Vega. Uh, I'm so emo. <laughs> hmm? Wow. Now I'm officially 10 minutes late. I glare at him as he walks away. We're not cool. Hmm. You must be Greg. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Oh. Aww. Mr. Vega leads me in and I take a seat in one of the comically small students' desks in the back. I might get stuck in this. Hmm? All right. Where were we? Now. Who can tell me about the unreliability of the narrator in J.D. Salinger's Catcher in the Rye? <laughs> His voice is so weird to do. I'm not going to lie. Hmm. Yes. Colin. <laughs> Colin stands up and does the thing where he blows into the crook of his elbow to make a fart noise. Hmm? The whole class erupts in laughter. Hmm. All right, all right, everybody. Very funny, Colin. Please sit down. I like people who talk like that always like spit everywhere. Like, please. Oh, Jolly. <laughs> it was really hard to spit with Jolly, but I did it anyway. No, Holden Garfield is an unreliable narrator. In since that, the bell for the end of the period rings. All of the students immediately get up and make a break for the door. What? Remember to do the reading and answers, the response questions on page 194 in your textbook. Oh my god, my fucking jaw. My jaw is not liking this accent. My jaw is like, Greg, stop. Not good! My jaw is dislocating! But I'm like, no! Mr. Vega is very posh and nice. Nobody's listening. Ah. Or oh, not, I guess. Mr. Vega turns to me and sighs. Puh. Hmm. Middle schoolers, right? <laughs> Don't you teach high schoolers? Hmm. Both, you know, budget cuts. Right. Oh. Thanks so much for coming in. No problem, Mr. Vega. Ah. 
Please call me Hugo. I don't normally do these impromptu parent teacher meetings, but as I am sure you know Amanda's very bright student, and I'm concerned about her recent behavior. Recent behavior? What the hell did she do? What's going on? Uh. Amanda has never been the most engaged student. But I know she cares. Recently, though, she's been falling behind. She's not completing assignments and has been doing rather poorly on tests. I normally chalk this up to senioritas, 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 but. This is strange. I thought Amanda always shared everything with me. It hadn't even crossed my mind that something might be wrong. <sighs> I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? Uh, we just moved, she's fine, or she has a tendency to bottle things up. I think... I wish, like, I wish I could tell him about, you know, her being rejected from that school that she wanted to go to. Maybe he could have helped with that. Um, I think it's honestly to say she has a tendency to bottle things up. Because if she really is my daughter, then that is really the case. I haven't noticed anything different about her, but she always tends to put on a happy face no matter what. Hmm. See if you can talk to her about it. I know she values you a great deal. I would appreciate your guidance. Hey, she keeps heading down this road. I don't know. I know how important art school is to her, and I would hate to see her miss out on scholarship money that she clearly deserves. I'll make sure to talk to Amanda. Thanks for letting me know, Hugo. I know his his accent is probably super American, but here's the thing. Welcome to my channel, bitch. This is where I do the accents, not you, not Mark, not anyone else, not even the creators. This is my town. This is my place. This is my Hugo. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Anytime. On my way out, I stop. Thinking for a moment, I turn to Hugo. Hey, Hugo? Oh. Yes? They ever catch the rye? Ah. Yes. Ah. I leave the classroom and make my way out of the school. I'm still a little bit in shock that Amanda was able to hide this so well from me. She's always been such a force for positivity in my life, especially after we lost her mother. Amanda must be done with classes for the day by now. I'm sure she would appreciate a ride home. And maybe I can talk to her about what's going on. I pull up to the carpool and Amanda hops in the passenger seat. So, did you have fun gossiping about me? Mr. Vega and I actually just gossiped about our celebrity crushes. Come on, Amanda. The world doesn't revolve around you. So you talked about Mario Batali the whole time? It was a very productive meeting. Uh. I'm pretty hungry. Can we grab some dinner? Sure thing. Uh, we can make something at home. Or let's go to the mall food court. Does that sound good to you? Mm. Yeah, sure. Why the mall? Jeez, can a dad take his daughter to the mall? Hmm. Will you buy me things? I will buy you a thing. Singular. Sounds like a deal to me. Uh. We drive in silence for a short while. Amanda plays a game on her phone. I should say something. You know, sometimes when a kid gets older, they find that they have to keep things hidden from their parents. And that's okay. Because sometimes that's what kids do. And that's okay. But also, sometimes it's good to have the parents' perspective. Because, you know, maybe the parents have also dealt with similar situations. Hmm. And maybe they're a little cooler than you give them credit for. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that it's good to share. Love you. 
Have you been reading my tweets? You have a Twitter? Hmm. What? Never mind. Look, sweetie, Mr. Vega said that you haven't been participating in class and that you're not turning things in. Oh, I'm fine, Pops. Seniorities and all that. I thought you liked Mr. Vega's class. It's fine. He's fine. We pull up to a stoplight and I eye Amanda. She's still texting. Just... I want you to know that you can talk to me about everything. Uh-huh. Uh I can tell that whatever it is, she doesn't want me knowing about it. That's frustrating. Um, I heard Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California. That's exciting. Yep. Are you bummed that you guys aren't going to the same school? Yep. Hmm. Amanda keeps texting. She stifles a laugh. What's so funny? Huh. Uh, it's, uh, I don't think you'd get it. Okay. Aww. Who are you texting? Hmm. Noah. Who is Noah? My friend. Does he go to your school? Hmm. Yep. For fuck's sake, Amanda. Jesus. Do you like Noah? Ah. What? No. Dad. Oh, I can't believe you would. Aww. Dad. I mean, jeez. Why would you? Ah, oh, gross! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> sorry, sorry, just asking. Dad, he's just uh, my friend. Jeez, guys and girls can be friends. He's my friend. Okay, okay. Jeez. This is going well. <laughs> well, good talk. Love you, kiddo. She leans forward and turns up the radio. I guess that conversation is over. To the mall, then. We arrive at the mall, a big indoor shopping center with a couple different floors. It's kind of dead, but that doesn't stop a mall security guard from yelling at a group of loitering or loitering teens. I want to say kids, my bad. Let's eat something disgusting for dinner. Ha. Hell yeah! Language, Missy. Mm. Heck yeah! better. <laughs> hmm. We approach the food court and evaluate our options. There's greasy restaurant after greasy restaurant. My heart burns just looking at the menus. Nobody looks happy to be here. What are you in the mood for? Bread dipped in sugar? Bread with cheese on it? Or do you just want me to inject some fat directly into your bloodstream? I extend my hand to her. Would you do me the honor of sharing some nachos? She she takes my hand with a grin. It would make me the happiest, cheesiest girl alive. We order a giant pile of chips and unnaturally orange cheese from a very unenthusiastic and possibly stoned teenager. We take a seat at a rickety table and dig in. Huh? These, these are bad. These are very bad. But also strangely delicious. Mm. We have to eat through the pain. We enjoy the fluorescent cheesy goodness together until we're all out of nachos. So, something's been bothering me for a while. Can you explain memes to me? Oh no! Ah, <sighs> which meme? Oh! Dad. <laughs> Amanda sighs deeply and places her head in her hands. Ugh. Dad, it's complicated. See, memes are inside jokes shared by a bunch of people that get less funny the more people do it. So the problem is that by the time a meme gets to you, Dad, all of us yous have already done the joke to death. Aww. And what's worse then, that is that movies and TV and video games will try to jump in on a meme train, but just based on how long it takes them to make them, the meme will be already long dead by the time it comes out. So it just dates it and isn't funny. Oh shit, what up? <laughs> that boy, boy. Dad. Dad, please. Oh? Anyway, changing the subject, where to now? Wanna go to the goth store? Mm. What? 
You know, the one that's all black and tries to establish itself as anti-establishment, despite being an exact representation of that establishment. I don't know what story you're talking about. You know, the one where you buy chain wallets and it's basically an assault on what people fought so hard against in the punk and hardcore movements of the 70s and 80s. Dude, you gotta be more specific. The one you threw up in that one time. Oh, that one! Amanda runs into the store with me trailing behind her. She makes a beeline for the back. There it is! You can still see the outline, kinda. I'm so... proud? Speech! Amanda... Hey. Speech! 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 Alright! I'll do it if you stop chanting! Amanda stops immediately. I clear my throat. Thank you all for joining us here today to commemorate an historic moment that would forever shape uh, history. On a day very much like today, some five years ago, our very own Amanda and Just had too much blue raspberry slushy on an outing to the mall. Huh. After begging her father to take her to dead Gotham Beyond to buy rainbow suspenders, she proceeded to throw up all over a display of My Chemical Romance merchandise. Her loving father then had to pay for said merchandise, which to this day remains among our possessions. Thank you. Amanda is moved. She begins clapping, slow at first, then faster and more vigorously. Several other patrons turn their heads. One of them also starts clapping about my head. This game is so weird. Hey. Oh hey, chain wallets! While Amanda busy, while Amanda busies herself looking at banned T-shirts, I try to find something of interest myself. Not much for a dad to look in the dead Gotham Beyond. Hey, I love those stores. I'm just saying. Peruse the banned T-shirts. Look at ironic mugs. Check the clearance bin for hot deals. You know what? Let's look at ironic mugs. Like irony is the best shit ever, in my opinion. I'm suddenly stricken by existential fear. If there's only one number one dad, then why are there so many mugs here that say that? This whole time, I thought I was the only one. If I'm not number one, where do I place on the global dad ranking charts? I have to work to do. I have work to do, sorry. Look, this is very important to me. I overheard a stifled argument over a cash register. An older gentleman is carrying a garment and showing it to a bored looking cashier with pink hair. I can see that. Don't know what to tell you, dude. I just walk here. Okay, I'm out of accents, so I think I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna give him a Russian one because I'm 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 just out of I'm just out of accents. <laughs> Listen, when I bought this online, the website said this blouse was Victorian inspired. However, when I received it, it clearly held the trademark of Edwardian dressage. Do you want a coupon? I can give you a coupon. Will you leave if I give you a coupon? Is there a manager present? People have to know what they're buying. I am the manager. I see. Well, it would seem that I have outstated my welcome. Good day, shopkeep. You superiors will receive a strongly worded letter by post. Whatever, dude. The man whirls around and storms out, his literal coattails tailing behind him. I can't tell if they are Victorian inspired or Edwardian in nature. Amanda truts up to me with a t-shirt in her hand. Oh boy, here it comes. Oh no. Hey, Datron 5000? Yes, I'll buy it for you. Wow, that was easy. Thanks. At least it's only one this time. Amanda plops a shirt onto the counter and grins at the cashier. Huh. I love your hair. 
The cashier says nothing and rings a man up, radiating hatred. I hand her a 20. So, what's that guy's deal? The cashier rolls her eyes so hard, I'm worried she'll pull something. That's Damien. He's in here all the time. He's obsessed with Victorian fashion or whatever. Wow, my voice cracks. <laughs> she hands a man her bag, and it's clear the conversation is over. We make our way out of the store and head home to get some rest. That's cute. A man and I sit on the couch, trying to find something to watch over bowls of ice cream. No I want ice cream, god dang it. Oh cool! Long haul paranormal ice road ghost trekkers is on! <laughs> Your favorite, right? Oh hell yeah! They have to make it over the Canadian tundra before the ice road melts, but also before they're hunting ghosts. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Also, the trucks are haunted. This is an episode I've already seen, but it's one of the best. Callum and Flint Dogbone, the twin brother truck driving and ghost hunting duo, find themselves in a in, find themselves in the greatest peril yet. Oh no! The ghost done got control in that truck. I can't steer on them there damn ice roads. Where we use this EVP mirror to try to communicate with the spirits. Weird, we're about to die. Ah, almost got it. If you listen carefully, it sounds like they're saying we're gonna die. Hmm. That's because we're about to die, you. Yeah? <laughs> this is art. The episode ends and Amanda excuses herself to go start arguments on the internet. I stay up a little longer, curious about the exploits of Callum and Flint Dogbone after their disastrous ice road accident. Afterward, I crawl into bed and get a good night's sleep. Dab. Dab on them ghosts. Dab on them one ghosts. <sighs> Morning, sleepyhead. Five more minutes. You have never, ever let me have five more minutes, so get up! Fine. We have cereal for breakfast and spend the morning putting together furniture. A man is much better at interpreting the tiny manuals. Pardon me. We're able to put together a few shelves and one desk. But I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be a bookcase. Ah. So, you excited for the cookout today? Excited to beef up my grilling skills? Ah, no. <laughs> if there's food, I'm excited. Uh, if there's food, I'm excited, dude. I'm all over those terrible store-bought sugar cookies that everyone brings to the parties. Mm. Yeah, those are bad. Which means there are more for me. Huh? Don't you want to meet some of the people in the neighborhood? Fuck the neighborhood, dude. I'll probably end up standing uncomfortably in the corner with a plate of food and hope that nobody talks to me. Yeah. Dad, you're a beautiful work in progress. We will get that butterfly to emerge from the cocoon. Yeah. The social butterfly. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Whoa. What? No! We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up to a cookout on time? You know what? We're going early. Just because you said that. I head out the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. We walk across the street to Yosef's house with a store-bought veggie plate. I'm a terrible cook if it doesn't involve a grill. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people, and the smell of hot dog wafts through the air. Small children run through a sprinkler, and adults chat in small clusters. I set our veggie plate down on a table next to two other veggie plates. Huh. Hey, there's Joseph! I wave to get his attention. The moment he sees us, he jogs over, arms open wide. <laughs> Welcome! I'm so glad you two were here! Oh my god! And you brought veggies! Oh, that's so good! Those little veggies like carrots I can put in my mouth and cucumbers! Like, oh, so good! 
I'm so fucking sorry. <laughs> Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my eldest. Uh. This is Christian and Christy, they're twins! Oh my god, twins! Hey. They stare creepily and say nothing. Uh. Then of course, there's our youngest, Chris. Jesus, dude, come on! Like, it's like he, he, he gave up. He's like, you know what? I don't care about the names anymore, we're just gonna do Chris. Wait, where is Chris? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. <sighs> Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. What is she doing here? Oh, and how could I forget my lovely wife, Mary, oh, who actually goes to bar and hits some people and wants to suck their cock. Joseph pecks her on the cheek. She smiles. Ah, oh, Mary, sweetheart. Did you put Krish to bed? I'll have to go look for him. What? You have to? Joseph takes a moment and regains his composure. Mary, this is a new neighborhood. Greg and his daughter, Amanda. I shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. I love her. Nice to uh, meet you, Mary, for the first time. Charmed. Well, I have to go over there now. Mary leaves. Oh, God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It takes all of my energy not to run away from the barbecue and start fresh in a new city. <laughs> my wife has a wonderful sense of humor. But please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. Wow, I think I've actually met everyone else. Oh. Great, I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Amanda and I mill around and try some of the food spread out on the table. I pick at some deviled eggs. Amanda grabs a small paper plate and immediately begins piling it with baked goods. Uh, I don't know if I want to make friends. Yeah. Come on, Dad! Who are you gonna party with when I'm off to school? But I don't wanna have to do pleasantries! <sighs> Dad! Ah! They're gonna talk about weather! <laughs> Go do it! Make a friend! But how could I possibly abandon my only child at a social function? That's bad parenting. <laughs> this plate of cookies is my new dad. Bye. Amanda shoves me into the center of the yard. Well, here goes nothing. I look around the party and I'm surprised to see some, fam some familiar faces. Isn't that the barista from the coffee spoon? Oh, dang. Robert is here. Didn't that guy throw a frisbee at my head? Isn't that the guy who was throwing a fit in dead Gotham Beyond? Isn't that a man's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. But oh, wait a second. All these people live in our call the sack. That can't be right. Better investigate. Okay, guys, so I'm gonna end this episode over here. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this episode and if you enjoyed this video or not. So, anyways, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, smash the like button. Feel free to share and subscribe. Just great, exciting now. Really love you guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.